Hey, good morning, everybody. It's about 7.45 in the morning. Um, right now, it's still a little bit foggy, overcast, but later on today, we're supposed to get up to like 77 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's why I'm up early getting the video made so I can go out and enjoy the great weather today and do all my errands and not have to worry about putting on 18 layers of clothing. Uh, legalities, remember, hey, I'm a clairvoyant, clairaudient psychic, uh, so everything I say is my psychic opinion. It's for entertainment purposes only. Please go do your own research, form your own opinions. The full disclaimer's in the box, along with my email, if you'd like to arrange for a private reading. And also the links for the tip jar and all the other nonsense. And if uh, you can, please make sure you click the subs subscribe button so you know when my videos go up. I'm pretty regular. I did do a little bit of change from last year, but it's every other day. Uh, if it's a weekday, Monday through Friday, I do a pre-recorded video that gets put up it goes up at 4 30 in the afternoon central standard time and 90 percent of the time 99 98 percent of the time i'm in the chat stream being able to talk to people and answer questions but then if it's a weekend day where a video should go up at 1 p.m central standard time i actually am live so people can come on and i answer two questions questions per person to make sure that everybody has a fair chance so um, if you'd like a live complimentary reading hey uh, join us on a weekend uh, this week it'll be this upcoming Saturday is when I uh, do it and yeah today is the 27th of February and remember it's leap year so remember if you're a Gilbert and Sullivan fan uh, Leap Year Play is a big plot twist in some of their operettas. Okay, folks, I am. if you're looking at me and I look a little bit washed out, it's because I have my actual real-life makeup on today and not the heavier stuff that I normally put on so I don't look ghastly pale. But if you saw me in real life, you'd see, oh, my God, yeah, she's got a full face on. So don't worry. I'm not. I'm feeling good. It's just that... Um, I don't want to have to put on a full face just to wash it off to put on another face to go back outside. So that's the story for today. Uh, okay, let's get going. Uh, Israel. Oh my God, did everyone see that stupid comment that Barry programmed into JoJo? Sorry, but you know what? It's like no matter what anybody else says, you can have crap passed in city in city chambers, like referendums and stuff passed through any country in the world. Nobody, if they say, hey, we want a ceasefire. No. That whole situation is between Israel and the evil empire of Tehran. Okay? Definitely. It's it's like we're I kind of have a book book thing going with people and yeah, it's the book The Last Refuge explains a lot about how the evil empire of Tehran started up and they've got all their tentacles all over the place. You've got Hezbollah, Hamas, Houthis, ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Taliban. And heaven only knows how many sleeper cells are now all over Europe, the UK, and the United States and Canada. Yeah, and we know that the CP CCP is flooding in military, their military in through California. But yeah, it's like Barry Sotero, the good old Muslim Brotherhood, who forged documents to go under the name Barack Obama to put us under an eight-year dictatorship of his 
faux presidency, basically to destroy things. He thought he was going to get 16 consecutive years, but Donald really threw the monkey wrench, so he didn't have Hillary as his puppet, but now he's got JoJo as his puppet. Yeah, it's Blinken and Biden destroying America. JoJo's oblivious. JoJo's like, oh, we got to have this, we got to have that, and I'm like, JoJo doesn't know what he's talking about. He's clueless, totally. Yes, it's coffee, it's early, I still haven't finished it. So, what they are talking about is Ramadan, which is a big holiday, a big religious period of time for the Muslims. Kicks off on March 10th. Basically, Ramadan, they sleep all day, then they pray, get up, or just before sundown, pray, and they party their asses off all night. Because they're not supposed to eat during from sunrise to sunset. So they sleep all day and they're up and partying their asses off and doing shit all night long. And this year they're kind of lucky because it's before daylight savings time and it's still kind of technically winter. So um, they get a very long evening to uh, party their butts off with. And they're saying, oh, we want a ceasefire for Ramadan. I'm like, that's bullshit. Because Hamas, the evil empire is not going to lay down the pow pows. The only way to solve the issue with Gaza is replicate replicate Dresden. That's the only way you're going to get it done. And a mushroom cloud over Tehran. Yeah. Some people may say, but hey, those people, the people uh, uh, who follow the evil empire, since a kid is, okay, when a child starts talking and stuff and rationalizing and understanding things when they're about two years old, so from about age two forward, the people who, fall, or who are under the jurisdiction of the evil empire are raised, knowing that, hey, to be a martyr for Allah, that's the greatest thing since sliced bread. So that's why they don't mind being used as human Kevlar. So if a mushroom cloud or they do a Dresden, those people are like, they don't cry about it. So let it happen. I, I mean, it's... And especially, you might as well do it once after March 10th kicks off when Ramadan kicks off because the evil empire doesn't respect any other holy day of any other religion around the world. So why not violate their holy month of party yes, prayer and parties? Yeah. Tit for tat. I mean, they're, they went after the Jews on a holy day. Let's go after the evil umpire. Yeah, folks. Got to do it. And even now, it's like it's getting really bad because people are now calling out good old shitehead, shideek Khan. We know how London is. We know I've seen the stuff going on in the UK. I have talked to people. Um, I have family and friends in the north of England, family and friends in the Midlands and Birmingham, and they're telling me in Birmingham, it's gotten so bad. Okay, a, a old friend of mine, his mom is in, uh, basically she's in a council apart apartment off the main, one of the main streets in Birmingham. And she's no longer safe in her own apartment building. So there's like, she is, I mean, she's been in this council flat forever. I mean, literally since the 1980s. Thankfully, she has one of her other kids who's in Leeds, who has a detached house in a safe neighborhood 
So, I mean, she's in her night. She's what? In her upper 80s, pushing 90s right now. So now she has to pack up and basically move to one of her kids' houses because, yeah, she can still get out and do everything for herself, but it's no longer safe because she's a very petite Caucasian woman. I mean, she did have wonderful blonde hair, but now it's it's gone white. Um, it's she's now from a, like a honey blonde to a platinum blonde. <laughs> Just hey, that's what color her hair went. Uh, she it's no longer safe from uh, physical assault. I mean, that's how bad Birmingham is. And yeah, okay, when. Fiona and Graham, when they were in uh, London for, for medical reasons, and they were there for an extended period of time, they did stay in an area that is close to a lot of government buildings. Well, with those, in certain areas of London, there's like the CCT cameras all over the place. So the little... And it really hadn't gotten too bad, but I've talked to someone now, and they've said just in like a month, things have gotten so nasty, Shadik has basically let the, let, let the city go up for grabs. So, if you're not darker than a paper bag, you're literally, your life is now in danger. So, I guess, hey, um, everyone should start picking up that uh, those bronzing drops that you put in your facial moisturizer. Hey, um, we know Rachel goes with fake tan, so in order to be safe in London right now, I think everybody else needs to start using the bronzer and fake tan stuff. Yeah. Otherwise... It's not safe for anybody who's actually paler than a brown paper bag. Thank you too. Shit, shit, shitik, shitik. Yeah, I, I've got to think of a really good nickname for that idiot. I, I mean, it's getting ridiculous. I mean, even stupid macaroni, macaroni brain in France, Macron. He's now making noise that he's going to send members of the French army, military, to help out uh, the blue and yellow flag country because uh, the comedian has so much white powder up his nose, he doesn't know what the hell he's doing. Yeah, he, everyone saw that uh, interview. I mean, the guy was like, <laughs> and, like looking for his next bottle of Coca-Cola. But he actually wants the other stuff that comes from uh, basically South America, but South and Central America. But we know how the Central Americans feel about that industry. They are P.O.'d because the evil empire is sending so many people over here. And they're helping, the evil empire is helping the CCP send over the F stuff that the um, farmers and the organized families aren't making much off of their white stuff that goes up the nose, their nose powder. Yeah, it's because, it's because the, um, the, other white, the other white powder known as white horse is grown in the territory of the Taliban. Yeah, the evil empire of Tehran wants to run the guys in Central America out of business. So basically the Americans, the Europeans, the Brits, their market is flooded with nasty ass white horse and the F stuff. They want to take this Central American family businesses, they want to take them out. Someone has got to start flooding 
Tehran with copies of the movie Scarface. You just don't mess with those boys. You don't mess with the pissed off Latin. Seriously, this is this is what it's going to boil down to. I mean, our governments right now, we've got the assholes trying to take over wor world domination. But I mean, hey, back in the early from like 1900 through the up until almost World War II, um, the white nose powder was actually legal in a lot of countries. And then people got their knickers in a twist and now it's illegal. But they're, uh, those businessmen, you don't cut into their stuff. And that's what the Big Red Sea is doing and the evil empire. And you're going to get a lot of people who, are, who speak all sorts of variants of the Spanish language. They may be our saving grace because they're not going to put up with it. And most of them are of a Christian Catholic faith. And they're not going to be bullied into giving up their weekly mass their novenas, their big white weddings. Uh-uh. You cross a Latin. Whoa, they are. It, this is what it's going to be coming to. This is what I get the hunch of. You don't mess with the, La the Central American men. Their business and you don't upset their mamas by taking away their rosary. Yeah. <laughs> That's how this is going to be duped out. Definitely. Now, so as for more woke bullshit, I guess in England right now, the woke fools have their knickers in a twist about the D Disney classic, Mary Poppins with Julie Andrews and Dick Van Dyke. I guess the character, Admiral Boom, hurt somebody's feelings with some of the dialogue. Yeah. So now, the movie, instead of being rated G, basically a movie for everybody, now can only be shown under parental supervision. Well, if the woke idiots have their knickers in a twist, why don't they also uh, change the rating on Lion King? Because there were some pe there were some characters that are bullies. Yeah, we know Disney is woke, but now the wokey idiots are now turning on Disney. Mary Poppins, a childhood classic is now being described as an offensive movie and should not be seen by children. The only thing I can think of that might be offensive? People dancing on rooftops around the chimneys. That's what you got to be careful for. <laughs> Some kid may want to go dance on a roof. That's the only thing dangerous I can think about of Mary Poppins <laughs> but yeah but yeah I did see um, I guess the, our favorite Swede has had some issues over the past day or so I guess he did a video talking about some of the newspaper broadsheet headlines and um, some of the platforms don't want it uploaded because the newspaper headlines are now talking about the whatchamacallit and the after effects, the side effects. And they're talking about how the, the um, farmer, pharmaceutical corporations are now, some of them are actually talking about um, things not, not so good. 
but I did manage to catch it. I had to do, I did have to go look on via another platform, but now in Sweden, stuff is coming out in the broadsheets that's by every, I guess, cash register and every grocery and convenience store and news agent. So stuff is finally coming out. But of course, many platforms. still want to censor people and so yeah i'm i'm saving some money up so i can get one of those online trading accounts you have to have at least 500 say ready to go and once i have that nest egg built up yeah i'm gonna start purchasing purchasing the abc corp the parent corp and parent corporation of Google because we know Google owns one of the platforms that everybody uses. A lot of people use. Okay? And if everybody just starts buying one or two, just a couple of shares, we start having a voting block. And um, they may not know what to do. I mean, hey, one stick, you can break it easily. But if you have a lot of people with like one stick and you put them all together, it can't be broken as easily. So, hey, I brought that up before a while ago, but yeah, I'm still having to stock away cash. I am on a limited income because I, yeah, if I actually, um, I mean, Social Security says, oh, you can go get a part-time job. But with now how they've jacked up the minimum wage, if I work even one day a week, that throws my income level too high. So part of my medical insurance would not be covered by the government. And for me to pay for that medical insurance out of my pocket, I'd have to be making over 50000 a year. Yeah, and I, I've talked with um, the gentleman, Dr. Kent Mercado, who is Illinois, the 11th Congressional District. He is on the ballot for the primary. Kent does want to start cleaning up the uh, health care system in America. Definitely. I mean, right now, people, so many are getting their knickers in a twist because of the termination issue. Well, come on, folks. Think for a minute, okay? We're not, everybody's focusing on one point. They're saying, oh, you're killing a baby. No. According to these, but according to the Bible, Torah, in the first book, Genesis, chapter 2, verse 7. It says life begins at first breath. And even hospitals say it, it isn't alive. It, it's not a living human till it breathes independently on its own. Okay. Now, if we allow the government, certain states are now allowing the government to violate the HIPAA laws, women no longer have complete and confidential health care in many states now. What's next? Now that they've opened the door and have allowed government interference into the health care of women, are they going to allow saying, okay, since you're no longer a person who can be physically productive to the economy, you're only going to be allowed palliative care from now on? Yeah. If the globalists get what they want, hey, KC3, he wouldn't be getting chemo. He would only be getting painkillers because he's too old. Stop quashing and saying termination abortion is a sin. No. By allowing the government to deny complete and confidential health care, 
and that's the door. You're allowing them to dictate your medical care for the rest of your life. And this goes worldwide. So many fools have already gotten the whatchamacallit. Many that I know that got the whatchamacallit have had cardiac issues. Uh, they've developed different forms of the big C, different forms of cancer. Other things like cirrhosis of the liver. Yeah, constant illness. All because they allowed the government to dictate their health care. People have got to wake up. The termination issue is the door that allows the government control over everybody's health care. And you got it. We have to fight to shut it down. But too many people are have their, bl their blinders on. It's not just termination. It's everything. Now, some other scuttle, but we're hearing that allegedly Rachel's trying to, wants to go back to the UK for the 10th anniversary of the Invictus Games. Okay? <coughs> <coughs> she also is planning on bringing the kids. Well, let's, that's going to be kind of interesting because who's, let's start, start watching the uh, casting breakdowns to see what talent agency and so if she allegedly is having the kids and bringing them to the UK start looking at the UK casting breakdown sheets for children who are the approximate alleged age she's going to try for the rent-a-kid gig again and uh, if she doesn't find suitable kids to rent. She's going to come up with a feeble excuse of not showing up. She's going to say, and take hey, um, somebody in the UK may decide to deny her entry into the UK. And people are going to be watching carefully should they land on at any of the major airports. Because they have to, their jet is going to have to come up at where... There's customs and immigration officers. Not for the dastardly duo, but for the flight crew. Okay? Um, so, you know, there's going to be uh, people with cameras that have long lenses on them. Just looking for a child to come off one of those jets. That jet. There may be a feeble excuse. Oh, I can't travel. Archie got the measles. But the other thing that is getting bantered about is that they're starting to run scared. Because, like, we're all hoping, wishing, praying, and have our minds made up for Donald to get, get the job in November. Well, I guess Donald has also said that um, he doesn't care who you are. He really doesn't. That he's going to insist that all immigration visas, immigration or visitor visas, everybody's held to the same account. If you're a private citizen, even though you're still under... Because of who your daddy is, you still have a diplomatic passport. But since you're no longer working for daddy, you have to abide by every by the rules. If you've been doing too much stuff, have an addiction issue, no, you can't come into the U.S. you got to stay back home and get your act cleaned up. That's what Donald is saying. So that's why I think he's going over and trying to play nicey-nice -nice with his daddy. But my gut feeling, he's going to end up, basically, especially when Donald gets rehired, 
he's going to let Andrew talk, give Andrew the ability to talk freely, which will tank that marriage. And good old Henry's going to be back in his old bedroom in Highgrove. Because nobody's going to want to rent, a, rent an apartment flat to him. Nobody's going to want him as a flatmate roommate. So, the only place he can go. Daddy's basically is saying, yeah, you're welcome back, my little prod prodigal son. But he's going to send him out to the country where he can be watched over very carefully and he'll have his old bedroom back at Highgrove. And when Daddy dies, that's where they, that's where he gets to live. Highgrove will go to him. That's it. But remember, the UK, Brit England, is the land of entailments. So he'll be able to live at Highgrove. He'll be able to get the interest money off of a trust account. But he can't touch the principal. He can't sell the estate. Go back and watch the first season of uh, Downton Abbey. That explains a lot how things are entailed. That's what's going to happen with Henry. He'll be able to be on high growth, but it's entailed, and he gets a monthly stipend for pocket money. That's it. So, okay, folks, it's been a half an hour. Um, I don't want this to take tw forever and two years to upload. I hope everybody has a fantastic evening. Uh, today's Tuesday. Next video goes up on Thursday, the 29th. Leap day. Leap year day. Yes. Yes. We have an extra day this year. So looking forward to see everybody on February 29th, 430 Central Standard Time. Catch you later. Bye-bye.